<laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm joined by so many people today. Can you believe it? The whole Orange Grove crew. I haven't been on Orange Grove's channel or vice versa since like 2010. <laughs> welcome back. How you been? Doing good, doing good. Thanks for having us on, Ethan. I know you have like 20 million subscribers since I last been on your channel. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Congrats. And Disney Family Man, he has like three channels now. He has a Citrus <laughs> Corner, a Disney Family Man, and a George. How have you been, George? I'm doing good. It's, uh, as I mentioned before, a family man's job is never done. <laughs> That's right. You better be in Disney World for the preview. Where, why you at home? You know, I wanted to go to the preview so bad. I just missed it by a couple weeks when my trip is set. And that's how it always goes. I miss it always by a couple weeks. <laughs> Terrible. But you'll enjoy it. And then, of course, the technical wizard. Not the theme park one, but the technical one. Oh. Dray Vash guy with his movie level setup over here. Hey, 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 what is going on? What is going on? There you go, right oh, there, oh, right? He the noises, he got the booms, the bangs. We love it. Freshly squeezed every day on the Orange Grove channel. Orange Grove is like three channels, went from one to three, and that's super cool. So subscribe for all three channels. Boom. So today we're talking Disney. That me <laughs> Disney. I know Dre and George and Chris have lots of Disney thoughts. You can check out all their videos with their interesting Disney thoughts right <laughs> after this. We're going to talk about D23 first. D23. My chat seems to think a new Tomorrowland's coming. What do you think, Dre? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I think we, I think, you know, I, I think we addressed this in in a, in a previous video. But hey, you know what? Th you know, my thoughts have kind of expanded. They, you know, they've they've you know kind of changed a little bit. So I'm glad you ask. Uh, listen, when I saw my chat actually come forward with that kind of you know that kind of information, I was like, I, it, it stunned me because it was like, wow, this is dusty. You know, he doesn't really, you know, mince words, you know, with his, uh, with his outlet right there. And that the fact that he, he, he said it was, he was, he expected it. I mean, that was pretty profound. And then we got, uh, Walt Disney World News today, Tom Corliss saying pretty much the same thing, uh, that they expected a, a, a tomorrow line at D23 Expo. And, and honestly, I, I was pretty shocked by that because everything that I had been hearing up to that point, uh, pointed towards you know like you know small additions or small changes to tomorrowland but nothing on a scale of uh, of of an entire overhaul uh so so i gotta be honest it it, it shocked me interesting i know right because chris you mentioned that because i think you made a tweet about toontown you're like oh they chose toontown over tomorrowland so you must be surprised as well yeah, I am because uh, look, Tomorrowland doesn't really have a lot of IP possibilities, <clears throat> and I've said this before. Um, you know, they kind of gave Star Wars its own thing, right? Its mm -hmm. own land. They gave Marvel its own land. There's not a whole lot they can do now with Tomorrowland. I, I like. I know a lot of fans are going to be like, "Well, what about Wally? Oh, well, what about Big Hero 6? <laughs> and, and, and I, and I love those franchises. I love those franchises. I'm a huge Baymax fan, but I just don't think those are really heavy hitting franchises. Now, I will say this though: this is a little bit of a caveat. With Galaxy's Edge, there's like a year and a half in the Star Wars timeline that you can actually utilize for that land. <laughs> it's right between um, Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. There's not a whole lot of a lot of space there. <laughs> So, so maybe they'll they'll incorporate some Star Wars into Tomorrowland. I have no idea, but it's interesting. It's very very interesting. I'm very very surprised that the that Tomorrowland, assuming what my chat is saying is 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 true, it's going forward. I'm surprised that they're taking it as seriously as they are. You know, I mean, Fantasyland can get an expansion. Mm -hmm. And they can utilize billion dollar franchises like Frozen and Tangled and what have you. And instead, they're they're kind of overlooking that and going into Tomorrowland. It's very, very surprising. I, hey, look, I'm not going to complain. I would love to see Tomorrowland get redone. I want it to get redone. It's It should be a priority. But it, it is surprising, to say the least, in my opinion. And uh, George, your thoughts? 
Um, well, as echoing of what uh, Mr. Vash Sky had brought up, you know, when you know Dusty makes a statement as big as "Hey, we may be hearing about a Tomorrowland redo." Uh, at the D23 Expo, a lot of people, you know, eyebrows raise up, you know, you have everyone's undivided attention because, you know, he usually knows what he's talking about. And he's usually quite, you know, on the money when it comes to those kind of uh, rumors that go around the company. Um, would I love to see it done? Absolutely. I think it's more of the aesthetics of the land itself yeah. that would probably get a a major overhaul rather than just adding more IP into the land because that land in particular doesn't really have too much to fall back on. They tried it with meet the Robinsons. Uh, they tried it with the live action uh, Tomorrowland film, which great movies, by the way, I love both of them, but yeah. there's nothing really there that can really hold up the land um, because they just weren't heavy hitters at the box office. Now to mention what uh, OG was mentioning about with Wally and big hero six, I personally feel like they would work out in the land, but uh, we had discussed it on his channel before, but they would be more of a um, a uh, background sort of um, not like the, the front runners to move the land along as far as with a change. Like they would just be there just to kind of be like the supporting cast, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but my thoughts that if they were to do a uh, Tomorrowland overhaul, it would more so be the the outer skin of the land itself and possibly move the uh the the jets back possibly i know that's a heavy hit because it's kind of an eyesore to have them right there to yeah. block the the entrance point of Tomorrowland. yeah and george you brought up a great point and we brought this up on my channel a few days ago but like Tomorrowland's problem isn't really a ride and attraction problem. It's an aesthetics problem. Mm -hmm. You have Space Mountain, which is very popular. You have even Nemo submarines are pretty popular. Astro Blasters, again, popular. Star Tours, popular. The attractions aren't the problem. It's the aesthetics. It's the rotting people mover track. It's, it's just the way that land looks more than anything. If they can really nail the aesthetics... I think we're in business, you know, now preferably I'd rather have like everything. I want good aesthetics. I want the Tron coaster. I want all of it. But if you had to pick one or the other, I think I'd pick the aesthetics because that's really where that's really the Achilles heel of Tomorrowland right now, I think. And I think I think a Tomorrowland overhaul would be largely limited to that, right? I think it would be largely limited to let's redo the exteriors of some of these buildings. Let's get rid of the old people mover tracks. If we do do something, you know, are we going to reuse the tracks in that instance? Probably not, you know. And right. then, I mean, maybe talk about, you know, getting rid of the Carousel of Progress or Interventions building. But, you know, it's those things that are kind of holding the land back. So I agree with you, OG. Uh, and that's why I was kind of surprised that they would even attempt to do something like this. I mean, I, I mean, I would have bet money that Fantasyland would have been done uh, sooner <laughs> than that. Which, yeah. by the way, I probably would have made some money, too, because... Fantasyland is going through a reimagining of its own, but just attraction by attraction, right? And mm -hmm. in that case, it's not really the attractions, like the, the exteriors themselves, like you would see at Tomorrowland, but really the interiors that are gonna are getting changed out and getting updated and getting refreshed. Maybe Pinocchio is on the list. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> you know we'll mm -hmm. see. But uh, Tomorrowland, yeah, I mean. You know, I think the one thing, and, and I think we were talking about it over the phone, OG, the one thing that might get people in the door and, and excited about a Tomorrowland redo is a replacement to the people over officially, for sure. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I do have to add uh, to it, and uh, I know we don't really have it on here because we usually have it on OG's channel, but knowing me, I go balls of the wall, so I'm just going to say it, and I'm probably going to get canceled after this. But Cancel here we go. Board. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. Thank you. you <laughs> we at least got the sound effects for it. Hey, we got them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I personally feel, and I'm sorry, uh, Dave from Fresh Baked, I know that you're a big fan of this attraction. Oh, but oh no. Uh, you have to honestly, me, take out the uh, Autopia cars. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's a huge prime real estate that they could yeah. use for Tomorrowland. And me personally, as far as the subs go, I would keep the lagoon. And I personally would get rid that. of the subs because the lagoon is gorgeous. I mean, just yeah. the outlook, you could literally turn that even into like um, with skull and you could actually attach that to a fantasy land expansion with like a mm -hmm. skull rock 
and have it more like a Neverland theme. And if you could tie it into an updated version of a Peter Pan ride, sort of kind of how they're doing uh, overseas with the same type of um, ride system for Flight of Passage in Pandora, but it's going to be themed to Peter Pan. You know, as far as like that kind of thing go, because you could break that up. So part of it would be for Fantasyland and then the other part would be for Tomorrowland. And that's a great that's a great point you bring up, George, is that like a lot of fans will be like, well, just get rid of the submarines, you know, just get rid of the subs. But you, they don't understand that you get rid of the subs and you're risking losing the aesthetics of the lagoon. Because mm -hmm. like what you said, George, is fantastic. A skull rock, you know, but we don't know for sure if Disney's going to go that route. I would hate to lose the submarine lagoon for a big gray box. Yeah. For, yeah, know, see, now, if they, yeah. If they were to get rid of the, the submarines uh, and they take the lagoon with it, then I'd rather keep the subs if yeah, it's going to save yeah. the lagoon. Mm -hmm. And that's a big risk. That's a big risk with losing the subs. You know, I'd rather yeah. lose Autopia. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, I'm fairly certain that you could integrate some design that would, that would incorporate the lagoon, but in just, just a new attraction that takes place mm -hmm. just beyond it. I, I, I think that's a reasonable uh, thing that one can do and maybe that's part of the reason why they refurbed the lagoon the way they did you know maybe it's like hey listen you know maybe maybe hey maybe finding nemo submarine voyage might not have a long-term future but maybe the lagoon does uh you know it's it's extremely photogenic and it can it could it could provide all kinds of uh, possibilities and ideas yeah. uh for for an attraction beyond its borders at, at some time you know uh, it's interesting that you bring up, you know, Neverland, you know, all that kind of stuff. The reason, and a lot, you know, a lot of people don't know this, so let, let me go ahead and share this with you. Uh, so Little Mermaid, the current iteration of it, being an Omnimover type attraction, was originally envisioned for the space where Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters currently sits. People think, what? I mean, why, you know, what? that doesn't make sense, you know, why would they ever do that? And it was like, well, we need to, you know, fill up this old Circle Vision Theater with something. It might as well be that, but take the entrance to, you know, on the Tomorrowland side and switch it over to the Fantasyland side. Ooh. There you go. That's your attraction, right? Interesting. Kind of a crazy concept right there. But I think the other thing that you would need to do, you know, uh, whether so it would, it would uh, sorry. So it would have been more like how they did Toy Story Mania done in Hollywood studios where the entrance used to be in Pixar place, but then they sealed that part up and it became the back part of the, the show building and just reversed it on the other side for toy story. Land. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it'd be a, it'd be a similar, similar thing, but uh, you know, that didn't end up happening. We got Buzz Lightyear instead. Right. Uh, but, but I think the other thing that might need to be adjusted is that, you know, the back of that show building of buzz and it's kind of like flat and it's not all that appealing. Yeah. That might need to change as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, 100%. 100%. And, and you, you brought up an interesting point, Dre, oh, yeah. real quick. I just want to say that you brought up an interesting point in, in terms of like a building that sits in a land and utilizing the opposite side of the building for an entrance yeah. for a different land. I don't know. I've been saying this for a while, but I think that's a definite possibility when it comes to the animation building over a DCA. You have a oh, massive absolutely. Marvel, right? You have a massive building, massive building that yeah. really, I mean, come on. I mean, for, us nerds love it. We go in there, we can watch the big animated movies, mm -hmm. but they, they can do a lot with that building. It butts right up against the vendor's campus. You can yeah. put the entrance to it in a vendor's campus. They could put something in there. Keep an eye on that building. I'm telling you, 100%. I wouldn't be surprised. 100%. You know, Good point. An indoor coaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's your you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so do you guys think they'll do the Tomorrowland renovation? If so, do you think they'll do it right, or do you think they'll cheap out? Oh boy! Uh, oh, why don't you guys? Why don't you guys? You want well, me to go first? Well, yes, I'll, Ray. I'll, I'll go. I'll go first. I'll go first. Yes, Here's Ray. the thing: I, I'm not 100 percent confident on that. I'm not because look, yeah. I, I've stood up for Chapek a lot. I do think he unfairly gets targeted a lot with the fandom like a lot like i, I even said the other day like with called mcgree wine i saw the tweet <laughs> yeah it's like it's like come on it's like it's like the fans want to say the buck stops here with chapek but then right. when something good comes out suddenly he's nowhere to be found in the conversation <laughs> if the buck stops here he, with he's, he's at he's at Iger's house having dinner <laughs> right yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah i mean if the buck stops here with chapek then the buck stops here with chapek then you got to give him credit for the good right you just got to but that's the thing. It's like, I, 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 
I don't. I, I can't the stand guy. the petty. I can't stand the pettiness. More yeah. so, like online. It's like when you nitpick and you dissect every little thing. It's like, yeah, you you say it where it, you know it, it, it where. I'm trying to think how to put this. Where you say where it hits the most, you give him the praise that he deserves when it happens. But right. it's like when you take the little nitpicky pettiness things, and it's like really, that's really what you have during your time. That it's like you're worried about that. It's like, well, well it's like the time when he was out. Me, me and Dre, we did a video on this. Dre, like where okay. JPEG was literally out with guests mingling mm. trying to like you know oh, and did talk that, he did that little hand thing or something right right and he's <laughs> hands don't like, scan everyone, yeah everyone, <laughs> and he was talking to guests and then the big thing on social media was where's his name tag it's like <laughs> shut up. oh man like, yeah, exactly Daddy's out there doing everything you want him to do daddy josh does this and you all swoon over daddy josh <laughs> let the guy do his thing he's trying he's not an extrovert at least give the guy some credit for trying and people nitpick the hell out of him you know it's, it's just crazy man. <laughs> hey cosmic crazy. rewind was 350 million dollars you know i mean that's just a small chunk of change right there and they end up you know pulling it off pretty well now were their cuts made yeah absolutely but yeah. the final product is actually pretty good you know uh, from the reviews i'm hearing so you got to give him credit and then everyone on twitter for well, that started under Iger, right and you know right. what else started under Iger? <laughs> pixar appear <laughs> if you want to give him credit for the God, G G cosmic rewind then you should give bob Iger credit for pixar appear but they don't do that see the, the pixar appear is a bad thing in most fans minds so that goes mm -hmm. to bob chapek Mm -hmm. The good shit, though. Oh, oh, that was all. That was all Bob Iger. That was all. Bob Iger. Come on, uh, it's, it's it's stupid. It's stupid. This is what they do, though. It's what they do. Now, look, <laughs> listen. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> you know these these guys. You know, it's like it's like they like. You know, my, my example that I always bring, you know, it's like Chapex walking into the Village Haas and going, oh, yeah, that chicken sandwich, that's got to be fifteen ninety seven. It cannot be thirteen ninety nine. You know, it's like he doesn't, he's the CEO, he doesn't operate on that level. Obviously, he has mandates, obviously, he has, he has instructions for his, you know, division heads and so forth. But come on, he's not, you know, he's not the guy getting rid of Hoopadoo Review or whatever, or, you know, uh, getting rid of Finding Nemo something. He, he's not he's not that guy right he he right. is you know he's running the entire company and honestly right now you know daddy josh he's in the position right and so when it comes to the operational realities of these things that's gonna more fall in daddy josh's you know lap than it is gonna be chapek but when it comes to big capital expenditures you know chapek's gonna have a role in that and to his credit he actually did uh, you know, fulfill a uh, uh, cosmic rewind, and and from that's, what I understand, what I people like it. Kind of interesting because when Tom Staggs was chairman of the parks and mm. Iger was CEO, mm. everything that was mentioned in the parks, oh, Staggs was a heavy hitter, which he was. But I'm just saying this to make a point. And then there's Bob Iger as the CEO. Right now that Josh is running the parks. It's like, okay, nowhere to be fine, no, not seen, not heard, not spoken for by the Disney fans. But it's the CEO's issue rather than the park's chairman. Yeah, yeah the, the buck, that's a, that's a laughable thing with fans. The buck, doesn't, the buck only stops here because that's the convenient way to blame JPEG. The buck didn't stop with the CEO when Pixar Pier premiered in 2018 and Iger was the, was the CEO. No, no, no. Then the buck didn't stop here. It was Bob JPEG. He ran the parks. Everything stops with Bob Chapek. It just it's convenient where we always blame Chapek for the bad shit. And look, the guy wouldn't have been my first choice, but we got to be intellectually honest with ourselves yes. and at least give credit and blame where it should be. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And, and yeah. a lot of people have to understand it. Even though he is the CEO, there's many other arms of the company that people are intertwined working right. on this stuff. Right, oh, they're teams of people, and and all those people, you know, have a have a hand and role, and in in and a great many things, and being intellectually consistent. Now, going back to the Tomorrowland question of whether or not it's going to be actually done well or not, right? Mm -hmm. Look, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to me, this has all the hallmarks of another 1998 Tomorrowland all over again. To be honest with you, and 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 honestly, it's it's. 
I think there is a little bit more ambition than there was uh, back in that time, right? And I think there's a little bit more will to go a little bit further than they did back then. At the same time, I kind of just look at it and I go, you know, you have a very fiscally conservative Disney company right now, especially with some of their kind of liquidity issues, as JPEG would would call it. But but you know, their cash flow problems are kind of a concern. You have a falling stock price. You have you know thirty billion dollars worth of capital expenditures going towards the studio. It, you know. How much of that is going to get funneled towards the parks? I'm not really sure. And it's like, you know, like I was telling OG over the phone, do lands book vacation packages? Historically, they haven't. So you're going to need some type of an attraction. You know, you know what? what's the cost of all this actually going to end up being like? I think Walt Disney World News Today was talking about the, to like north of $600 million or something like that. And, and I... I I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So what is that number? You know, I mean, Tokyo is figuring like, you know, $400 million around there. What's that number today? You know, going going for Tomorrowland domestically in Disneyland? I, I, I have no idea, but it can't be good. I would like to see it get done. Do I think it's going to be in the time frame of how people are suspecting it to be at the expo? I don't think. Um, as uh, Vash had mentioned, it, it's not going to get people to say, hey, let's go and see a new exterior for Tomorrowland. You know, I mean, flights, you know, <laughs> prices are up, you know, hotels are up, you know, just yeah. tickets, reservations. So to get people's butts in the park, get the turnstiles rolling, they need something that's an incentive, sort of speak, to get people to go there if they're going to do a complete overall. Yeah. Um, but if you even think about it, we didn't even really get any information on the retheming of Splash Mountain yet, you know, so we're still like cradled on that notion, but we're going to move over to Tomorrowland and who's even really to say what's going to be for Splash Mountain, because when they do retheme Splash Mountain to Princess and the Frogs, primarily for Disneyland, I truly feel that it's going to extend further into New Orleans Square, but they would have an incentive to extend New Orleans Square because they're going to have practically a brand new rethemed attraction. But for mm. Tomorrowland, that may not be the case right now. Yeah, yeah. interesting point. I mean, look yeah. if you if you can't if if Tomorrowland doesn't get the resources that it needs, right? If you can't don't afford these. All. Don't do it at all. Exactly. That's that's my point exactly. And so it's like, as far as resources go for the company, I mean, I think there's. There, there are some other things that could be addressed in in the mean in the meantime. If you can't, you know, address this uh, the Tomorrowland problem properly. I mean, there is one way that you could get me in there. They could do absolutely nothing. They couldn't even touch. It. If they just throw in a Carl's Jr. in there, I'm happy. About that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh no, maybe still waiting on the entrance. You know, still the construction wall and the two green plots of land. I mean, that shouldn't be too much. Right. To- build right that's supposed to come in spring 2020 obviously it couldn't but i mean i feel like it could have you know i just put a couple white things up and better than a construction wall covering a sound box now yeah. mm-hmm. well, and, and from what i understand that that box is there because but, it's, like, it's some sort of mechanism for the astral orbiter yeah i think it's yes. like the sound in the yeah some some the yeah it's the, the it's, it's the air it's the it's the some of the some of the uh, com- components for the hydraulics for the actual, you know, lift mechanism. Mechanism you can hear it when it actually takes off, right? Which yeah. which which, which, which kind of highlights the point of w- even more so why they should remove the astro orbiter from the entrance mm-hmm. because of that. Remove that box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then you can get rid of the box. You can put the, you can put the astro orbiter in the back of the land. If you get rid of the people mover track, fine. But just put the put the rockets in the back of the land. It is it is the, it the rockets. The entrance. It really does. The it rockets does. being in that entrance is like a really bad hemorrhoid. It's like you just have to remove <laughs> it just to get the flow going. It's well, <laughs> come on, come on, tomorrow, like get your fiber, get that flow going, man. Yeah, get that. Get that be, be like it. Be like Adventureland and get that flow going with Tarzan Street. I was getting out of there. You know, get the flow. Oh moving. boy, here we <laughs> exactly. go. This is this is when I would pay the, play the drop right here. <clears throat> Yes, <laughs> folks, we only have high class stuff on this show. There you go. But <laughs> no, I mean, no, George makes an interesting point. I mean, yeah. operationally, in terms of traffic flow, it is 
horrific. The, the rocks, removing of the French fry rocks as we have uh, described them in this Twitter and everybody, everything, it helps. But, I mean, you still can't get around the fact that you have this, you know, this huge kind of uh, uh, aerial carousel right in front of the land, you know, and it's popping out in front of the hub and it's it's. It's not the most sightly thing, right? Yeah. And it's it's you're having to walk around this thing. It would be much more beneficial just operationally for it to be, you know, put back, uh, you know, in, in the land. And maybe that's maybe that is a possibility, right? If you remove the old people mover platform, you know, maybe you put the rocket jets there. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and even with the parades and all that stuff coming back, it really exacerbates the problem. Absolutely, crowd people sit there. People are trying to move, they have to make the one way entrances, that's a star tours and around. It's very bad, especially on those very, very crowded nights. Absolutely. And if yeah. you make a new platform, you put it on top, it makes it even more thrilling. So maybe even more worth the wait. Right, right. Yeah. Wait. So D23 predictions. I want to make rest of that. What do you guys, what would you, what do you expect and what do you want? I remember that one time. Was it, it was a Destination D? I think it was Destination D. Orange Grove. You said that, man, you didn't expect Disney to get anything. And then you got, wow, you're like, more than you thought. So you No, know, yeah, no, 100%. Or do you think it's going to be Disney World focused again? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> like, the, the, here's the thing. Like, historically, the D23 Expo is the Walt Disney World show. It just is. Look, when mm -hmm. we got the big stuff, like Galaxy's Edge, it was because it was like what Iger said, we're not building one, we're building two. Mm -hmm. And it was Walt Disney World was included in that. But very rarely, if you ever look, if you look back at the D23 Expo, very rarely does Disneyland Resort get a lot of big, hard hitting announcements. But George down here actually had a good point and that maybe this year will be different. You know, Walt Disney World is kind of like tapering off its 50th anniversary. It's already in full swing, kind of coming up, coming out of that. Disneyland God knows Resort, why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Disneyland Resort now is kind of like on the cusp of, 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 of this Disneyland forward thing that is probably going to get approved. Um, we, we got the Avengers E ticket. That's probably, again, it's money on the table for Disney. They're, that's probably going to move forward for Disneyland Resort. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this this D23 might be a game changer for, for Disneyland Resort. We might see, look, my prediction, if you're going to ask me my prediction, I, I think that the, the Avengers e-ticket or some sort of Marvel e-ticket yes, um, will, will be will be greenlit for um, Avengers Campus, probably announced at Avengers Camp, I mean, um, at D23. I think we might even hear a little something about Disneyland Forward. Now, I know fans, it's too early for any blueprints or official plans, but I think that maybe tomorrow can come on stage and kind of just say, hey, look, you know what? We mentioned uh, Disneyland Forward a year and a half ago, and we're happy to announce that we worked a deal out with the city. Look forward to more things to come. That's all he's got to say. So yeah. I think something like that might be on the table for D23. If we get those two things and what Dusty was saying with my chat saying that like Tomorrowland is expected to be announced. Oh man, that's a huge success for Disneyland. We get Tomorrowland. We get a, a very vague um, a, a news about Disneyland forward. We get the Avengers E ticket. I'm a happy orange grove. I'm a happy mm -hmm. orange grove. I'm good. I'm going to take it a step further, uh, what you were saying, OG, and I think it's more so because we all know more so Bob Chapek is going to be there because it's the biggest <laughs> Disney convention on the planet, you know, minus Star Wars Celebration and what have you. But as far as for Disney fans, he's going to be there unless he has another dinner meetup somewhere. <laughs> you know, but it's... <laughs> But more so, he's going to be there. And I feel that they're going to have to have him announce something big to kind of get the fans on his side. Yeah. And again, my prediction that I mentioned this before, that they are going to have Josh come out with Bob. And they kind of do it as a pair duo to make all these announcements. Because... I don't really know how the fans are going to react when they hear his name, you know, as he's <laughs> walking up on stage, you know, and it's petty again. Yeah. That's more petty stuff, you know. Well, well, and George is brilliant. George is fucking brilliant. And look, Chapek, if you're watching this, take George's advice. If Chapek, if you walk out with tomorrow, 
the fans' heads are going to explode because they're not going to know if we boo you, we're going to be booing Daddy Josh. They don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. So you (laughs) come out with Daddy Josh and he's cover for you. It's going to be a lot harder for them to boo you, Chapek. I'm telling you right now, I'm sure Christina Shockey will agree with me. (laughs) <laughs> i mean yeah we'll come I, out with a nice diet plan for weight washers and hand that out to everybody <laughs> he's got to get his uh shape has got to get some uh get some advice to to whoever dressed uh Iger, you know <laughs> just like you know oh, i gotta look fashionable here we go you know um, <laughs> but i, no, but I look- do think but i do think disneyland forward is going to get mentioned nothing specifics where it's like oh attraction after attraction new land new park new this but i think they are going to start the point especially because this is going to this whole expo, the whole theme around it is the 100 years of the company. So I think, and it had mentioned, okay, what's the next 100 years going to be? And that's what Disneyland Forward I'll is all about. A new Target collaboration. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the resurrection of the uh, Target dog. Uh, there you go. Bullseye. <laughs> I, I, wait, I swear, I waited <laughs> all night to get myself. <laughs> A, a, a freaking ten dollar Target <laughs> gift card. <laughs> oh man, but, that was but, tough. But that was that's tough. But that's where Disneyland Forward, you know, lays on. It's more so for the future of the resort, and that's right. what they were talking about the next one hundred years. So I think if they, you know, were to say, "Hey, we're green lighting this. This is the potential down the road. Here is maybe some, maybe not concept art, but here are some ideas that we have in the pipeline." that could potentially come out of it. I think the, the, the fans would go nuts and that would kind of get them back in, you know, good graces with the relationship between fans and JPEG. Cause right now, you know, nobody is liking him for whatever he's doing. So they, I think if he was to be there, they would have something majorly announced as far as the parks go. I hope so. Yeah. And no concept art because Disney and this concept art, they, it's too long. No, it's never. Well, it's never the. It's never the same thing anyway. I yeah, mean, we, we yeah, were just did. We just did a topic <laughs> on Epcot. You know, of what we start out with, and then yeah, what you end up. It's with. like, and now it's. It's it a looks little like too a, revealing. Little bit too specific. Too early, yeah. just say the details, and then when you go closer, then do a concept art. So it's not too much different, or else then you're like, what and what and like Splash Mountain. You announce it so early. Every time I go on Splash Mountain, people are like. Is it gonna be twins? Is it gonna be Princess and the Frog? And then when it was closed, they're like, "Oh, they're transforming to Princess and the Frog." I'm like, "Oh no, they're just refurbing it, guys." Sorry. You know, if you're gonna do it, keep it vague. You know, don't right. don't do specific concept art. You know, people get attached to that and they can't let it go. Mm-hmm. No, 100, 100. Should we talk about Ethan? It's your channel, your call. You, you want to talk about Splash Mountain? Yes, let's do it. Let's talk about what Disney World's gonna do first, right? I think. Um, some I saw recently, and then like I think what oh Braden, that's who it said. Mickey views. He tweeted something that Disney World in like October or something it's gonna close, and then uh, no word on Disneyland yet. But uh, interesting. I just See, I thought that. it was gonna be the other way around. I thought right. Disneyland was gonna yeah. pave the way for Walt Disney World. Yeah, yeah, because Disneyland look, it, it's like here's the thing, like. Disneyland is like perfect for Princess and the Frog because it straddles New Orleans Square and Critter Country. And Princess and the Frog kind of, kind of, kind of like, kind of deals with both, right? It's very much New Orleans, but then you have like the alligators oh, and all the critters that can kind of play to the Critter Country side. It's kind of a perfect addition to Disneyland. Walt Disney World, not so much. And when, like you said, George, when when Braden said that Disney World was going to go under the knife first, that shocked me. That absolutely shocked me because it seems just like such a much better fit for Disneyland. And not look, we can't ignore That's the cheaper fact. fit because you don't right. have to leave here the whole land around. It, exactly, and we can't ignore the fact of the of of the socio political element here. And California is much more of a blue state than Florida. <laughs> so you would think there'd be much more of an urgency to get this changed in California, Newsom's California, than it would be DeSantis's Florida. And according to Braden, it looks like the 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 the, the incentive is more 
the the, the ur- sense of urgency is more on the Florida side. It it, it really blows my mind. And, it, I, and if that really it. is, and if that really is the truth that Florida is going to get the change first, I necessarily, and I could be wrong. Yeah. I necessarily don't think it's going to be this upcoming October. I think if they were even going to attempt it at Walt Disney World's first, they're going to wait till Tron opens. And that's just my personal mm-hmm. opinion because they could have a much more flow guess uh, guest flow on the opposite side of the park. And, and, and why that's why they can have that down. Well, are you saying it's not going to close until 2075? Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's speculation. A long time. Right? <laughs> but that's why that's why I wasn't necessarily that surprised. You know, to George's credit, I, I wasn't necessarily surprised that Walt Disney World was getting it first. Two reasons, but one big one being that Tron was going to open. Right. Re- you know, uh, I mean, I know it's a kind of a meme, but it's we, it was going <laughs> to open relatively quickly. I mean, they are working around the clock to get that thing open, at least by oh, I'll probably say quarter quarter one, 2023. I you haven't know, which seen would put it, it moved. It's moving quite. Vastly, yeah, I mean, like this is the most I've seen construction on that thing. Right. In, so think about it. You're gonna get time. you're you're gonna get an attraction that's you know decent capacity, right? That yeah. will open up, open up, and that will open the opportunity for Splash Mountain to actually go down. Uh, you know, and they wouldn't have suffered that significant of a capacity loss. Now, the, the other thing that that kind of lent me towards towards this direction of of you know maybe 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 Braden is actually accurate is because from what I understand. Changing out, you know, Walt Disney World Splash Mountain is a much more straightforward endeavor than Disneyland Splash Mountain. You know, being that it was the original, it was it's the older one, and in it was built to a certain code and to mm-hmm. a certain degree that makes it much more challenging, at least in like California than, than Walt Disney World. Yeah, it, it sort of it's sort of along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not quite as extreme, but but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it's. And honestly, this this whole project is, I mean, it's it's really grown and it's, you know, in its ambition simply because these two attractions are so different. You know, some things will apply to, to, to each, obviously, but how you stage things, how you actually decorate things, how you, you know, how you set these things up. I mean, they're going to be, it, it, there's not a lot of overlap as as much as you would think. And, and honestly, yeah. that's kind of how the current Splash Mountain is when you think about it. Now, By the I- way, as far as D23 uh, D23 Expo predictions go, they have to say something about Splash Mountain there, right? I mean, they have to. At least another piece of concept. And that's, and that's what I was just going to say. When Did they have a reopening for Toontown? Yeah, that, so that's the thing, right? So Toontown's going to open in 2023. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what I'm getting at. Because if they open Toontown, you guys are going to have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Right, and they'll offset the capacity. Yes, yeah. so that way it can eat up more people north of the park could that could be potentially where both splash mountains are going to go down around the same time for me my estimation guess is going to be 2023 i i would agree with you i i think that's kind of the kind of the goal is is get these big new attractions up and running Mm -hmm. and you can off you know you you can you can not dig into the capacity but offset it when you take these uh, big splash mountains down uh so i yeah, I I mean, and that's why I'm kind of not shocked uh, that this is going to be maybe taking a little bit longer on the West Coast than it is on the East. I'm going to go with January 7th, 2024, and I'll tell you why. Ooh. Because 2023, <laughs> Mickey's open. No, right? no, no. Let's, let, no I'm, I'm glad you didn't give like a detailed, specific date there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, you know, whenever the holiday season ends in 2024, because you know, Mickey's going to open up, let's say spring, but let's say there's a delay. So summer, right? So you want to have the water ride open for the summer. Then you have the holidays. And then I feel like that refurb season, that's when they'll shut that's our Splash Mountain down for the whole, you know, that January and then open it up whenever it is. That way. You have so so you're so you're things. more so saying after the fact, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opens up with the newly Toontown and Tron opens up, have everything kind of running at once to kind of eat up those summer crowds into the holidays. Mm-hmm. Then once well, you have it yeah. kind of setting down, then also they down. can, they can run their little, you know, get your splash mountain merch before it closes thing for a few months. Yeah. Whatever's then, left. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Whatever they can do. That's non-racial or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> splash mountain merch. I know they're, they gotta be thinking something up their sleeve. There's past to be something. <laughs> 
because I want to buy some and then, you know, close it after the holidays or at least when it's, it's cold outside. Yeah. And that, and that you, Ethan, you bring up a fantastic point, dude. That's the, that's the thing. They kind of, they've kind of, they've set this whole thing up where it's, it's not just a retheme. Yeah. It's, it's very much tied to like social issues in our world. So are they going to like do the whole, like get your splash mountain merch while you can, because no. I don't know, man, like Absolutely that, not. it I might be problematic. It might be problematic. Some, put some critters on there. What's <laughs> wrong with the critters? I want Briar. I want Briar. <laughs> I want them all. I want. I know. I, 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 and look, listen, I mean, <laughs> Come on, listen, that, that Splash Mountain merchandise, that initial, you know, Splash Mountain merchandise, it sold out completely, right? But it was never uh, made again. It was never made available know, and again. And that was just yeah. utter, complete bullshit because I wanted my set so badly. <laughs> and I'm seeing these people walking out with gar garbage bags. They literally came to the <laughs> they literally came to the parks with garbage bags. <laughs> but that just tells it. I mean, that that really, you know, that really puts in perspective the mindset that they might have right now if they. Have we ever seen Disney not capitalize on on I mean, on some kind of big merchandise opportunity like this? Everything. Right, it's never happened before, right? But but it, the fact that it happened here, it tells you everything you know it, uh, surrounding this issue that they wouldn't continue that merchandise line, even though there was money to be made. Because I think they're kind of worried about kind of the kind of the uh, uh, maybe, maybe the stigma that they might receive if they continue selling this merchandise. No, By the way, though. I um you know it's interesting you 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 say about that that timeline Ethan um I think the most analogous kind of uh thing that we can kind of draw up to 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 compare this overlay to when it comes to timelines and so forth um is Maelstrom to Frozen Ever After mm -hmm. that was like two years that this was down mm -hmm. for and I can't think that Splash Mountain is going to be any faster than that I mean. When Splash Mountain goes down, it's going to be down for a while. It might not be necessarily, you know, based on like arbitrary timelines that they previously work on. It, I mean, it it, it it might go down any time. Right? No, no, one hundred percent. Every day that it's down, <laughs> it, it's going to be it's going to be a long process. Splash Mountain is is an is an extremely elaborate attraction. And they're going to look, I mean, there's a lot going on with that ride. They're going to want to get this right. Look, here's the thing too. Here's the thing too. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, maybe they won't retheme it. But here's the problem if they don't retheme it at this point. Mm -hmm. Disney has sort of wrapped this whole thing up into, like I said earlier, into mm -hmm. a social issue. If they don't do it. If you know, then they're, they're, they're in the soup even worse. Like that's yeah. the that's the problem, you know? And like also, know. because like I said, the past two times I went there, even when we're just under reefer, people think it's already being transformed as Princess and the Frog. So they can't back out now because I feel like so many people already think it's happening or going to happen. Right. I mean, they'll never officially cancel it. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe just kind of delay it, delay it, delay it, delay it, delay it until mm -hmm. it just never happens. Marlin. That's a possibility. But what happened at Chapek with the Florida bill and the LGBT plus community? I I don't know, you guys. Uh, I, I I think I, he's looking for a win on that. Uh, on that, yeah, in, he in that, can't he can't afford no more hiccups as to what's already on his plate right now. And speaking yeah. of plates, I just have to say that if this never comes to fruition of the the Splash Mountain retheme, he's going to have to set up another dinner. And we all know he has like how many dinners lined up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man has yeah. dinner. <laughs> he could be you know, setting up a dinner with that, the shareholders soon. Yeah, I don't think Wastelands of McCarthy is not going to be too happy. Ah, Christy, yeah. Wastelands of McCarthy, <laughs> easy, you got it. You see? I'm telling you, it's catching on, guys. It's catching on. Wastelands of McCarthy. Oh, Wastelands of McCarthy. Yeah, tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow's a big day, you guys. Are you hyped? Are you hyped? The cute. The cute oh, yeah. The quarter, oh, quarterly good. earnings. Yeah, I think you guys got you gotta go live. 
Yeah, maybe we, you want to go live. You got what? What time is the quarterly earnings uh, tomorrow? Do you guys, Drake? Right? You know, like uh, probably gonna be. Is it one o'clock? It's usually like, is it one? Is it one EST? It's usually four, like four EST. So one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, four o'clock Eastern, so like one o'clock California time. Closes at one here, so probably at yeah, one one thirty ish. Fuck, man, that's right when my fucking lunch ends. <laughs> oh, <dang it. laughs> and that's when I start work. Unfortunately, <laughs> if you want to yeah. go live or do anything, you know, afterwards, you know, let me know. But but Definitely. doesn't look like it's gonna work out at that time. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm very curious. I'm very very curious. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the the stock is gonna be on May 27th when Cosmic Rewind opens to the public and obi-wan kenobi premieres on disney plus yes. yeah well and, and here's the other thing oh and dre i i called you last night bro but it was kind of late mm -hmm. sure but here's the thing i want to tell you guys too this is a little bit of a wrench in the plans for disney sure they're kind of screwed tomorrow because the uh, supposedly what I heard is the inflation numbers come out tomorrow. Oh, oh, no. 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 oh. No. Even, 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 even <laughs> if Disney has like a banger quarter, which I really do believe they will have. I really have that gut feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, those inflation numbers are going to really mitigate their, their earnings. I well, think. and you know, those inflation numbers are going to be now. Sorry, theme park wizard. I don't mean to get the politics to, too much, but you know, <laughs> no, we got to say it because it relates to Disney. It. Okay. Here's the, here's the problem. Okay. Uh, Biden is talking about inflation. Now he's talking about inflation now, even though we're on the eve of maybe a uh, historic Supreme court decision, right? You know, but he's talking about inflation. That means that inflation is going to be bad. Those CPI numbers are going to be, <laughs> That that's not going to be good, right? So, the stock might go down anyway. But the real big determiner for me, the the, the big thing I'm interested in most in, is going to be the subscriber numbers. What do those subscriber numbers going to be like? Because there have been some, you know, there there have been some efforts in order to, in order to get uh, people, uh, namely people, uh, you know, maybe able, exactly right. <laughs> There, there's been an effort to get people to cut the cord when it comes to Disney, Disney Plus, and, and I want to know whether or not those efforts are successful. I don't think they will be. I don't even. Maybe they might even be. Might not even be reflected in the numbers. But if those numbers are anything less than stellar, I mean, we might see another Netflix thing, and right. and and that's kind of the concern. Do you think they should have moved Obi Wan Kenobi to a different date, or was that more their plan of? having it after the fact of this particular quarterly earnings to kind of see if people will keep their subscription for Obi-Wan Kenobi as to opposed to already having it started think, before the quarterly I earnings are released. I wanted to, uh, whatchamacallit, also give space to Doctor Strange, you know, to, you know, right. yeah. a week after, they want to give a few weeks. I, I think, I think the idea is to have a major release on Disney Plus every single quarter. Right, and I th I think this this quarter needed it, so I I, I think they positioned it fine, uh, but it, it you know it's just gonna be uh, it's, it's it's gonna be interesting to see if the company's efforts and their thought process when it comes to those release windows and so forth are are, are gonna equal out to a good quarter. I, I'm not really sure. I mean, this one, I and it's got people divided. Some people think it's gonna be really really good, then some people yeah. think it's not gonna be so so good. April was a horrific month for the company. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Well, and here's the thing too. A lot of the Wall Street um, experts and analysis are like, oh, well, you know what? Netflix had a really bad quarter. Therefore, Disney will have a bad quarter because of Disney Plus. But you know what? That might not necessarily pan out because you have to also have to remember our friend of, of the channel, Alia, uh, she sent me an email actually saying how like a lot of people are actually actually leaving Netflix to go to Disney Plus and like I think even Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 loss you're seeing for Netflix might be them jumping ship from Netflix and going to a Disney Plus. Yes, but but Dre, you brought up a great point mm -hmm. where there is this contingent, this political aspect of this whole thing where conservatives are like, no, we're going to cancel our D Plus because of woke Disney. Mm -hmm. that's an element of this whole equation. And that's, that's going to be a big part of it too. So 
I'm super, super curious what those numbers are because it can go really either way. Honestly. And, and here's the thing the get the guy who broke the, you know, reimagine tomorrow kind of uh, program, right? And the videos that came with it and so forth, Christopher Rufo, he's actually part of an effort, a campaign to get, you know, people who have seen his work, who have seen these things go viral and so forth to cut their Disney Plus subscriptions. And I just got to mm -hmm. wonder whether or not that's going to be successful. You know, is this, is this kind of noise that we've been hearing it, is it actually going to generate into something tangible? I, I, I'm I'm really not sure, and that's why I'm I'm most interested in those. Now, I will say, right. you know, as opposed to Netflix, and here's the other thing too. So Netflix is not as, nearly as diversified as as um, Disney when it comes to their their industries that they're in, their entertainment properties, their their uh, you know theme park divisions and so forth. I mean, they're 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 everywhere. Whereas Netflix is namely a uh, a streaming outlet, right? Or, you know, a studio that creates content for that and so forth. But it's interesting, you know, we did have a fluff piece recently on 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 the theme park division just recently, just on the eve of these numbers. And that might be a signal to Wall Street to go, hey, look, guys, don't be so necessarily, uh, don't necessarily be so, t you know, uh, uh, you know, one, uh, what is it? Um, tunnel vision. Like, yeah. Yeah, on on just the subscriber numbers, Disney itself as an entity is very diversified in terms of its investments and its portfolio, right? And so remember to take those things into account. Looks like, it. yeah, well, that's, no, but that's what they were. That's what they were saying, like from the get when JPEG had announced to say, you know, there was going to be, um the main focus was going to be for the streaming service and for Disney plus. And I think at the time it was the right route to take, but now that things are starting to reopen back up, the parks are in full swing, the crowds are coming back. I think they need to stop leaning just more towards uh, the streaming service as being their, their, uh, their crutch, so to speak, to hold up those numbers. I think they need to start looking more into uh the going back through the parks. And I was actually having a conversation earlier with, uh, uh, Brandon, uh, Muir that is friend of, uh, orange grove 55, uh, channel. Ma Matthew, Murr. Matthew, sorry, not Brandon. Sorry. <laughs> Matthew. I know a Brandon and a Matthew. Muir, so I didn't know too. So. There you go. Uh, uh, Matthew, I was having a conversation with him. Uh, and I had mentioned that I think more so that they are going to lean into uh, looking more into the parks rather than the the streaming service. And I think that's where they're going to kind of switch roles a little bit, I feel, in time. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, and, and look, as, in terms of, you know, going heavy, heavily into streaming and making that uh, foundational part of your business – it was great for market capture, right, during the events of 2020 and beyond, right, when everybody was locked down. It was great for picking up subscribers and so forth like that. But as things open up, as markets open up, and as, as, as you know, things that are tangible that people can actually go to start becoming more and more available, people are going to be looking towards those experiences. And I think Shapec made the right call in like, hey, you know, let's have this, you know, be on the platform and and maybe you know maybe steer away from that a little bit when it comes to temp poles, uh, you know, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, you know, uh, Multiverse of Madness, I think is right. a good example of of making the right call, getting that in the theaters and kind of you know capitalizing on that uh, and that end as well. I think the honeymoon phase of the streaming, you know, thing is is kind of over. I, obviously, the streaming wars are still going to you know play a role, but but mm. you know it's got to be weighted uh, uh, out, you know. Um, when you have these these other um, revenue streams opening up, no, I, you know, I a hundred percent agree, and I am totally team stream. Look, I am a I am a to I am totally a Scarlet Witch stan. Woo! I, Woo! Wandavision, I, Wandavision. Yeah, I want to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness so bad, and believe me, if Disney put that on Disney Plus as a premiere access. They would have had my 30 bucks already, okay? But I'm not into the theater. But here's the thing, and Dre is absolutely right. The the streaming honeymoon is over. It's now either put up 
or shut up kind of moment, right? It's a come to Jesus kind of moment now with these streaming services. It's no longer good enough just to exist. You have to perform. And now there's a lot of competition. And the king of all streamers, Netflix, is like drowning, right? It's well, over. It's absolutely it's over. But there is one other aspect that you had mentioned, OG, way back um, before theaters were even reopened. And now that they are reopened, that you're starting to see those heavy hitting films that can eat up the crowds and break the box office results how they used to. And as you had mentioned about like chick flicks and, you know, like uh, D oh, tickets. Oh, man, Dory, you're getting toxic on us, man. You're getting toxic yeah. mail on us. Oh. <laughs> Woo, Cancel flicks. George again. <laughs> So gonna get canceled, George. Yeah, I'm watching now. I know it. I am. I I can feel it. But <laughs> uh, like here. as you had mentioned, no one is going to really pay that amount of money to right. go to a theater to see those kind of movies anymore. But when yeah. you have Star Wars and Marvel and even I hate to say it, like I mean Pixar even falls into that category with chick flicks i'm sorry because they haven't really found the right now i can't really say the same thing for light year i, I have I like high say, hopes i was gonna say like toy story stuff i that can draw yeah i think i think light year may movie. be a comeback for for yeah. pixar but, but stuff like turning red you can put that on disney and then of course with the, <laughs> and then of course with uh the new Avatar film coming yeah. out in December. I feel yeah. like those are the movies that you're going to get people to go into the theaters, and those are the ones that are really going to count. <laughs> so that's where I feel the streaming service is going to suffer in that instance, because even if you were to add a brand new film onto Disney+, Plus, if it does not appease to the audience to say, hey, I'll give my extra $30 for that, then it, and at the end it's not going to matter. And yeah. thinking of sorry, um, theaters um, and streaming things, mm -hmm. theaters, I personally, wow. So I saw Doctor Strange twice, once in a standard thing and then once yesterday in 40X. And the seats were moving. There's fog and smoke. It was super cool. Nice. After that, I realized I feel like every single theater should be outfitted with only premium screens, Dolby, IMAX, no standard yeah. anymore. Because why do you want to pay theater prices are increasing like 15 20 bucks once if they'll see a standard 2d thing in a regular movie theater you need a dolby an imax you can see these big especially the big blockbusters like avatar marvel star yeah. wars are gonna be in theaters you don't want to go and see a non-premium theater for pay all that money to go and sit in a standard theater for that i feel really feel like if theaters want to keep up they should retrofit every single theater even if they have to go smaller and it makes premium theaters because wow the moving the 40x versus the 2d it's quite a difference and it's actually what we're seeing from a multiverse of madness interestingly enough i i, I was reading some reports that that uh overwhelmingly people chose to see multiverse of madness on a premium screen in a premium mm -hmm. setting right i think the average uh price per ticket was almost 13 dollars, which is huge because the mm -hmm. average ticket price of dr strange originally back in i think 2016 now uh was like eight dollars so mm -hmm. that moved up considerably obviously there was inflation involved and, and stuff like that but but the fact that people are moving towards a more premium experience i agree with you uh ethan i think I think you you know you're going to have to change to a model that's a little bit more a little bit more premium uh, in order to to accompany these kind of premium experience films. But uh, OG, you had something to say? Mm -hmm. No. It, well, we talked about it the other day, Dre, on the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Avatar. Uh, I think it's called the Way of the Way of water. Way of the Way of Water. The Way of Water. Yeah. Way of yeah. water. Yeah. Hey, do not underestimate James Cameron. This guy. It, Man, he 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 kills it every single time. The, the dude is is a genius. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing with James Cameron is that this this Avatar movie is coming out, I believe, in December of 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This movie could completely resurrect the 3D theater going experience. We don't know, but James Cameron, don't underestimate the guy. And if 3D comes back. Oh my God! You're talking that that though. That's a huge money maker for theaters. Massive yeah. money maker. They can charge a, a premium rate to go to the theater. 
3D is much more expensive than just a regular film. Yes. Um, that changes the game for theaters dramatically. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you right now with this Avatar movie, it's been the talk of the town. I've seen it on social media. Mm -hmm. Everyone is fucking talking about this Avatar movie. It looks gorgeous. It, it really does. Uh, yeah. That, gorgeous. Yes. If, if that kind of, if that triggers a 3D revolution like it did the first time in 20, 2009, Theaters are going to be in a much better position. I'm telling you right now that that's going to change the game significantly. And All I'm saying is, after I saw the Avatar tra trailer twice, I want to fly right to Pandora and Animal Kingdom. It looked so gorgeous, but the 3D wow. now, like the way it is on the the screen, it looked sure. like you can just touch the water. It looked like you're swimming with them. I was like, wow. At least I was watching a nature documentary, and I am I was about to book my ticket to Disney World. Disney World is gonna. I wouldn't be surprised if Pandora got a nice little uptick because it looks. Gorgeous. I think it might. I think oh, it might. Well, we were having a we were having a brief discussion on our uh, DMs um, with uh, Mister uh, Ranking the Mouse. Yes, uh, that we were talking about uh, the possibility that you know if this film moving forward with the, the the next three sequels after it could this potentially lead to future expansion for pandora at animal kingdom yeah i mean and that's the interesting thing about that because it was actually james cameron who's been telling disney no when it comes to a pandora expansion because he was like hey look i've got more films coming out i'm gonna have more material from which to pull from let's wait <laughs> for those things to come out and then let's talk about the sequels later or, or, or sorry the expansions later so i mean that that's kind of an interesting conversation but no oh gee you know with the 3d thing I mean, in the consumer market, there is no streaming service that offers 3D. I don't think, no. I, I can't think of one. And as far yeah. as consumer, you know, tech and stuff like that, I mean, TVs don't even offer it now because it's just kind of a, you know, it's kind of a niche thing, right? You know, it, it's it's just not really. It, so so there's a hole there that could be exploited if Avatar 2 decides to go that route, and and only you can only get that experience at a theater it's a very interesting thing now yeah. i know that theaters were going to experiment with variable pricing uh um, wow. some theaters like amc has been charging doctor strange higher than other movies higher than other yeah and and that would be the only thing i'd say that would that could maybe make use of those smaller screens and make use for those smaller films mm -hmm. but i think i think honestly it's gonna be temple all now the this way may be a, now this may be an ignorant question but i don't know how it is on the opposite side of the coast do you guys have matinee mm -hmm. pricing we some theaters do <laughs> i do here five dollar tuesdays and five dollar for oh, okay like yeah that. see because if you go any time before uh, before i think like five o'clock uh that's the matinee time so it's mm -hmm. eight dollars for adults 650 for a uh, child we have that even with our premium screens so okay yeah, interesting and, and I don't go to the theaters. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. There, team stream there. Although I would, Orange Grove suggest going. I think the nearest to is North Hollywood. North Hollywood Regal has a 40X theater. I just be seeing one movie in there. It's pretty cool. It's something you got to try like one time. Yes. It's so cool. So and, and I, I, I definitely want to check out Doctor Strange because... Man, like I like I said before, I'm a huge Wanda fan, and I'm hearing this is basically like a Wanda movie. It's like, a I Wanda. I'm just gonna tell you right now, with without not giving no spoilers, they might as well should have just called it Wanda in the Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll just say they that they should have, and you sold me on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll tell you something. The movie is like this is the PG-13, and like R is like right there. <laughs> Right there. I mean, my friend came out of the movie last night. She goes, "Was that rated R?" I'm like, "No, it's PG-13." She goes, "How?" I'm like, oh, "It movie. is." I, I say, out of all the Marvel Marvel films thus far, that one is the most edgiest, darker. Yeah, it really is, oh, and cool. I'd probably say it's the first one that, like, if I had a little kid, I'd be like. I even had a little bit of a, not fully, but I also had like a little bit of like Van Helsing vibes, like going through. <laughs> That's, That's crazy, interesting. Man. Yeah. No, I, I'm very, very curious about this movie. I, I, 
I'm probably gonna make my way out to the theater. Hell, I saw the I saw the <laughs> I saw the Batman in theaters. I gotta see. I gotta oh, see. Gee, you gotta represent your girl. You, you gotta represent your girl. the Batman in theaters. This is better than that. You gotta see one division in theaters, and that's right. I'm calling it one division from now on. Let's do Very it. Cool. Let's do it. Very cool. So, what new ventures? Do you see Disney getting into like another time the metaverse? Any new thing, any futuristic new thing, business like Cotino? You see them venturing out into any other cool things like that? I'm still waiting on that. Uh, what is it like the, the black box sort of virt- oh, yeah, black virtual box reality thing. type thing? Like, if they were going to do something, anything for Tomorrowland, they could have even done yeah. something like that in there, but. You know, OG, didn't we talk about the the uh, prospect? Okay, yeah, you go, you go and do it. We did. No, me, 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 and me and Dre had a, had a whole conversation about this on the phone about the metaverse and stuff. And this is the thing with the metaverse, man. Like, I think, it, like, I don't know. I think it's kind of overhyped. Like, I think it's sort of like the the new thing, and so people are kind of like overhyping it. Bob Iger is all in on it. He's like on the board for this. Like, well, it must be good. <laughs> well, even. Even Bob Chapek though is all in on it. So I don't know. Yeah, it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of talk about like the metaverse and stuff. And like I don't know, man. I think it's kind of like right now. I feel like it's look. It looks really cool. But I think it's kind of a niche market. I don't know if it's going to go like the way of like the laser discs or like mm-hmm. you know VR, like all the stuff like that was so promising back in the 90s and early 2000s that never really came about i kind of feel like that's where the metaverse is kind of at you know i think elements of the metaverse might come into play in the future but i think that what they're proposing right now i don't know i i i really don't i don't know how how sellable it is to the general public like is a look for a gamer yes they're all down for that but is a family of five going to really sit together on a couch with, with <laughs> VR goggles and do this. I don't, I don't really think they are. This is weird. What do you think, Dre? Where were you at with this brother? No, I, I agree with you. I mean, look, listen, you know, uh, look, you know, they're falling in the same trap that other VR pioneers have before. Oh, as soon as the, you know, visors get lighter, right? The technology gets better. The screens get clear. We're going to have this widespread adoption and we just haven't seen it. And VR right now is pretty good, you know, but we haven't seen the widespread adoption that we were expecting. Now, of course, you know, the the products coming out of Facebook, previously Facebook, now Meta, right, are doing, you know, pretty well. But again, I'm not seeing the widespread adoption that was once promised. And and honestly, you know, thinking about this now, it's like. I think the future for this kind of meta or virtual reality space, right, is not necessarily a, a virtual reality that's 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 constructed that you jump into and escape into, right? It's probably going to be more of a layered experience and on top of the reality we currently inhabit that you can't escape from. You know, that's probably <laughs> what it's actually going to be. Uh, and and that that's kind of where I see the industry going. I mean, right now, you know, People are already kind of like, you know, they they already kind of have this kind of uh, uh, uneasiness when it comes to the, the their reliance on devices as we currently see them, right? But what if some company comes up and says, hey, look, we can get rid of your screen. You just put on some AR goggles, right? And and you can be away from your screen and and and, and you can have this 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 experience that it that that you know, takes in kind of like a Google lens almost that takes in information that you would have seen on your phone, but late, you know, layers it uh, out in the reality that you experience today. I mean, that that's probably more likely what's going to happen. So I, you know, the metaverse, I don't know, man, I just don't see it working. Right. Mm. Mr. Family man. What do you think, man? The metaverse, man. What what are your thoughts? (laughs) I, I think it's more so the fact, just like how we were talking about with Tomorrowland and future world as part of Epcot and a lot of that, it, those issues, it's when you're dealing with the topic of, you know, the future and the, the way of tomorrow, I think technology is moving at a much rapid pace than we ever anticipated. So by the time something were to come out and be perfected in that notion, it's like, then you're on to the next thing, you know, it's right. a new fad, it's a new type of technology and it constantly keeps on getting, 
upgraded and updated. And it's like, even with our phones, it's like, I remember getting the Apple iPhone 12 and then like two days later, out comes 13. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and here, here's an interesting point, George, you, you bring up a fantastic point about the perception of the future. It's like, you know, you guys, I remember watching back to the future part two, mm -hmm as a kid and I was looking at like the year 2015 and I was like, in awe. I was like in awe over this, like flying cars, hoverboards, all this cool shit. I was like, wow, this is dope. And then 2015 comes around and then like aesthetically, let's mm -hmm. be, let's be honest. Aesthetically 2015 doesn't look that much different than 1985. It really doesn't. If you walk down, you know, like a city or a residential area aesthetically, looks pretty much the same. The only thing that's changed is information, like, right? The internet and the exchange of information. Cars don't fly. They don't look that super dope. I'd even argue that the cars of the 1950s look doper and cooler than the cars now. I mean, they totally do. Yeah. It, the aesthetics of, of this world that, 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 you know, really haven't changed is the information exchange that's really changed. So that's interesting, George, that you bring that up because it really is like kind of like a risk like the perception versus versus the reality, the future could be totally different. You know, it could be something totally different than what we're kind of perceiving now. And, and that's kind of where we're at, you know, and it, it, it will probably come down to that. You know, it, it's interesting because, you know, when you talk about that scene in Back to the Future 2 with, with 2015, yeah. uh, you know, looking up, uh, speaking for the, the designers of that whole uh, that whole kind of future, they based a lot of that off of kind of Asian, Japanese inspired culture and Japanese inspired ideas because wow. the idea back then was, well, the Japanese are going to overtake us in terms of economy, in terms of all this kind of stuff. And so they're going to be a new world economic pattern. We had to, yeah, exactly. We had to integrate some of those in here, right? But that just tells you the mindset of, of where the future they thought was going to go. You even get a reference of it in actually Back to the Future 3 where he's like, oh, look, it's made in japan it's like what are you talking about the best stuff's made in japan right um so but 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 look the you know the you know the company that got it right i think myself personally the company that got the future right i think it was disney and i think it was in the form of spaceship earth the whole Ooh. thing right there was communication and the power of communication and how communications passed down and what it could mean for the future True. and the whole communicore, right? Uh, that was a big deal. And, and like, I remember going to Epcot, you know, as a kid and, 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 and seeing like a video phone. I was like, Oh my God, that, that'd be so insane. Right? Like, I can't even imagine that. And now you kind of have that. Now it doesn't have the right. widespread adoption as maybe the phone did back at its time, right. but you know, it's, yeah, like you said, you know, the future, it's this kind of changing uh, goalpost. But, but you know, some people get it right, some people get it wrong. Well, you said, and you said it right, Dre, when, it, when, you say, when, you, when you said Disney got it right. What mm. movie was a Disney movie? Well, te technically Touchstone Pictures. Mm. But Dick Tracy, and they had the watch, the Apple Watches, long before the Apple Watch was even a thing. Right? You're talking to your watch. It was Dick Tracy back in the early 90s. There it is. Go ahead, George. And Oh, no, I was just going to say, and that's w the one point that we didn't discuss about Epcot was uh, the future, no pun intended, of uh, Spaceship Earth. And honestly, for me, I think that was a blessing in disguise that the the change of the upgrade for Spaceship Earth um, didn't happen when it did. Because I kind of would like that to prolong as much as possible because... Mm. I mean, I know we got a little bit of what it's going to be. We're, now, we're supposed to be following this light and it's supposed to be taking us on a journey for like a newer type of age of technology. But I love how it actually resonates back to the beginning of time, the Stone Age time, uh, the Roman times. It like takes us all the way through those pinnacle points of human history. And for me, I would like to keep that as long as possible. So, so you don't want to see it start with like the caveman times and end with like Stark Industries, is what you're saying, George? <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget the appearance by Peter Quill. He knows he's flying to the Wonder of Xanar film. He's gonna be his ship going right through there. Yeah, yeah there you go. Hmm. Visited like, Epcot as a kid, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, you know he knows all the rides exactly by their names too. They do, yeah, <laughs> precisely by their names. Right? <laughs> He's the biggest fan. <laughs> and look, I th I think Bob Chapek is a is attached to this metaverse idea yeah. because I think NFTs are involved. 
let's just be yeah. honest here. I mean, I think that yeah. idea excites him, and I think that's why he's kind of saying this kind of stuff. But honestly, I think it's the wrong play. Or at least if you are going to dabble in that world, don't invest huge amounts of money for sure. I think Disney Plus is, you know, a, a, a better play, and 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 maybe broadening out, maybe maybe getting into video gaming, maybe you know they you always mean, go through their cycles. Not, so, so, might be smarter. So, so, Dre, you're saying that it's not a good idea to pull another $70 billion worth of stock out. You know what? Let's not, you know, let's not pull a Zuckerberg and get too invested in this. Now, I have a question for anyone because I get I asked this so many times and I get no answers. What is an NFT and don't say non-refrangible token? What is it? I just need to be like a picture that I can buy for some reason. Or yeah, sell. it's so it's a digital asset that you can buy or acquire that is blockchain to only that item, right? So instead of like a like a digital asset that you would find in like I don't know a video game or something, right? Where everybody's got a copy of those assets, an NFT is 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 your card or your item or your whatever that exists in the digital space it's yours i i i guess there are i don't know like i um i guess it it depends on the virtual world that you're in uh and you can go through that process Uh, look listen i'm trying to you know get on board with this stuff too but it's it's weird i'm so like for example in this uh, the the arena that shall not be named i'm gonna call it staples center change names to staples center <laughs> they gave me a free nft because as part of their staples center's program and i don't know what to do with it. i don't even know where to find it how to use it what to do with it why i don't even that? know what the fuck you're talking about it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing. I don't get it. Oh man! I know, dude. Look, it's, yeah, a, it's a, and look, I look as a gamer. I mean, all all these uh, all these uh, companies like Ubisoft and everybody else are pitching this whole thing. Oh, NFTs are going to change your industry. I'm like. Can you just create a good game? Like that's all I want. Like just like, just do what you do, do it well. You know, why do you gotta follow trends? Come on. Well, like, well and that's kind of the issue. You better well, not make the currency at Disney Parks NFTs only. Exactly right. Hundred percent, and, and that's kind of, great point. Great great segue in what I was just gonna say actually in regards mm. to like video games and Disney mm. Parks in that they're kind of following the same trajectory. Unfortunately. Like I used to love video games. I used to fucking love video games yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah, growing up in the eighties, I was addicted to Nintendo, Super Nintendo. I even got into the N sixty four, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I started to lose interest around the time of the PlayStation when they started to like incorporate like these micro trans- micro transactions. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right, you got to buy memory. Oh, and sh- I just like to buy a game, and that's it. Right, I want to buy the game. I bought like in the 1980s. I bought Zelda, and that was that was the end of it. I bought it and I owned it, and that was the end of it. But then with the mid 90s, you bought a game, and that was not the end of it. You got to buy memory. You got to buy this. You got to buy that. You got to you know, and it, it became drama. And that's and kind how of how you like, look at it now. Now you got to buy digitally. Oh, uh, you got to buy a starter pack, and then you got to buy right. the accessories to that yeah, starter pack. The and you DLC. Buy, yeah, then you got to buy accessories. Right. It's like you might as well should just go out and buy a freaking Barbie and Ken. It's like, <laughs> well, it's right. like it's the FIFA mindset. I don't know if any of you guys have seen uh, this video game franchise, FIFA, right? Mm-hmm. But it's it's all about you know these kind of loot boxes, microtransactions, kind of model that has made these you know. Uh, these are billion dollar enterprises now and right. everybody and their mothers wanting to, you know, uh, wanting to get in on that. And we're seeing these kind of microtransactions at the parks, interestingly enough. So to a guy like Chapek, that idea is Morning extremely morning. attractive. Okay. Yeah. So, so let me ask you fellas this, as far as like with the metaverse and like the video gaming and the technology and everything, what do you see becoming of the play pavilion at Epcot? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, know the play pool, you're gonna have to pay to enter, pay to pl- walk around, <laughs> pay to play the games, pay mm-hmm. to breathe, and then leave. Pay to exit. Well, well, that's the thing, Ethan. That's the thing. They, they, they only gave you part of the name, it's the pay to play pavilion. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> you go. There you go. Yeah. No, look, you know, it's interesting. We, we, I mean, I thought it was still on the table, but now you're seeing these 
uh, I guess the Mickey and friend meet and greets are going to be in Communicore Hall now, which was going to be a major component of the Play Pavilion previously. And now it's like, is the Play Pavilion still going forward? They've installed, well, you know, it was supposed items to be in, in there. The, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. Right. And Correct. they rehab that whole building and they've installed stuff in there. But it's. You know, in this latest Epcot oh. announcement, there's it's no there to no, be yeah, found. Nothing, it's still nothing coming. Meant. They're just figuring out ways to upcharge everything. So then, they're ah, there you go. Experience. Perfect. Yeah, there That'd you go. Be, well, hey, if you're play plus pavilion. <laughs> when you're waiting around for your lightning lane or your boarding pass or whatever, you're gonna want to stop and you know play somewhere. We're well, right <laughs> next door to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Go in the play pavilion and go in there, and we'll microtransaction you that way. Get, no, your NFTs, get your NFTs. Get your NFTs. Oh right. gosh, please no. <laughs> but speaking of the uh, lightning lane, since we're paying for it now, there's. What do you guys think? Do you think they should raise the price to be like you know Six Flags, Splash Pass, and Universal Express, like more expensive, so not as many people will buy it, so the line won't be as long as the standby line, yeah. or or what? What do you think? Well, well, Dre, you actually made that exact point in, in one of the videos on my channel. Go ahead and 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 and, and kind of explain. Yeah, your... my my personal belief is is that you know when Josh G. Morrow makes a quote like this exceeds our expectations, he ain't lying. I mean, <laughs> Genie Plus has seen an an amazing and incredible adoption, but it's been to the detriment of everybody else you know involved. Exactly. Um, I mean, the only one benefiting is Disney. You know, what do you what do you know? But <laughs> but but no, I mean it's it's just too accessible. And you see Disneyland Paris, they're wanting to do like a ninety euro thing mm -hmm. where. You know, it's going to be very similar to Genie Plus, and you can only imagine, you know, that's the kind of, uh, you know, maybe the mindset and philosophy of this thing going forward. Right now, it's just, it's, it's too many people can access it, and it really is playing havoc with all kinds of, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, operational realities that these parks have to contend with. I mean, you're seeing Lightning Lanes, uh, you know, uh, emissions going out the door, you know, going across, uh, going across places that they never really envisioned because so many people are on the program. I think they do need to limit it, either a hard cap or make it inaccessible by a higher price point. I, I, I think that's. Yeah. That's the that's they, obvious. They seem to want to get as many people on there as possible. And you know, I'll tell you, it's working because my friend who went for my birthday, she hates Disney. I, I changed her mind. She just thinks it's okay now. That's my goal. <laughs> but that, we're in line for Raiders Springs Racers, right? And it really wasn't that long. It was like 60 minutes, but the like out line itself wasn't that long. But there was a times for like for several minutes. I'd say up to maybe nearly 20 minutes. We didn't move like a foot or an inch. And I said, you know, but then the lightning lane, it was like 302 and then lightning was like 305 I'm like, oh but look camille for three, oh, three minutes you can just hop on over that line if you want to spend 12 bucks you're like yeah let's do it so it's working but it's terrible <laughs> well, but, yeah. we played lightning for rise and well i isn't that anyway but rise and cars i wasn't planning to do cars but we really were not moving like even i i like lines i don't mind lines but even I was like, wait a second, this is like, this is a little, this is a little too long. We're not, we're not like, we're like, I could be going backwards almost. <laughs> well, we went through, I went through the same thing with, with my, with my fiance a few weeks ago, we were in line for Smuggler's Run and we were stuck in that line and not moving at all. Mm -hmm. And I turned to her and I'm like, did it break down? <laughs> That's like what's break. going on? But it really didn't because they were letting the lightning lane people through. Mm -hmm. Like just they 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 were only like they were zero they were like oh, zeroed no. in yeah yeah only on them and they were just letting them through letting them through letting them through letting them through and, and we're like, standing there like, for half an hour. Commoners over there, this is just so <laughs> lucrative customers coming out of here. I mean, the, I mean, and you guys aren't wrong. The ratios that I've been hearing, I mean, I've been hearing, I mean, previously it was like 80 to 1 or whatever. I'm hearing 100 to 1, 110 to 1, 120 to 1. 100 people before one person to stand by yeah. moves. I mean, that's a lot. That's that's not going to be, that's not going to be pleasant. And by the no. way, when we went, when we paid, where it took to get, go out of line and go get on into our car, it took five minutes. We never stopped walking. I was like, "Wow!" She's like, "Yeah, this wow. is great." I'm like, "But if yeah, you I'm really, not... but if you really think about it, yes, it, it it is one of those things where it's like, okay, because we now have to pay for individual attractions. Yes, for us, it stinks because we're so used to having that free fast pass option. For Disney, it's a gold mine. But if you really stop and you think that 
if you really want to have an enjoyable experience that if you're already going to be forking out the money anyway, people pay six to eight dollars for one cup of coffee at Starbucks. Right. And it's like if you're going to do that, you know, it's going to go, you know, in your system, in your bladder. You piss it out 15 minutes later. You might as well put out the twelve dollars. Well, to go ride a ride. Yeah, no, you're right. They raise it up to the Universal Express at least 75. Something where you right. know, if you you really that way you you get what you pay for. You're not in the standard right. line. You're, right. You're and it's interesting. Dollars. You can go on Universal Express. You can do the shows. You can do the rides. You just walk right in for the most part. But now, when you mention about the Universal Express, because I actually had some issues with that as far as over yeah. here in Orlando. Oh yeah, because I was getting the package and I thought I'll just add that on mm -hmm. to to my package. It would have cost an extra three thousand dollars <laughs> to add the express for a week. Oh man. that is like a whole nother package that I could have spent at Walt Disney World. That is a lot. So when no, uh, when people say oh like just it. and it, it can benefit you Right. But they also told me that Hagrid's and Velocicoaster wasn't even part of that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. hell, if I'm going to do that, I might as well should just stand in the regular basic line. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. And that's the thing that I've been saying all along is that when, when you really, when you take a microscope to the other companies, like, because mm. everyone's got zero in, zeroed in on Disney. Everyone's watching them like a hawk. But when you, when you do the same, when you apply the same kind of scrutiny to Universal, they're not that much different, you guys. Comcast is a mega multinational conglomerate. They're just as fucking greedy as Disney. They don't, they're not your friend. They, they're not trying to like just do you a charity. They are just as much in it for the money as Disney. And mm -hmm. like George mentioned it, they are honestly the same, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, though, I will say to all you listening and watching out there for every specialty Starbucks drink that you buy for each boba ball that you suck through your paper straw. <laughs> just think that's one attraction down that you could have been riding at Disney. Right. It's but here's the thing. Like Mar uh, Disney is kind of like DC where they all, they all get the hate and the yeah. fashion. And then Marvel is like. All the other places where they go, oh, it's okay. Universal, give them a pass. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Come on, we just give them a pass. Even though they made you the same things, it's so kind it's of funny that way. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, too. And, and here's the thing, too. As a local, I'm not going to pay for Lightning Lane. Like, I'm a big I'm a big Disney shill, right? I don't, I, I'll admit it. But I'm not going to pay to go on any attraction. I really don't care. I go to the park all the time. I can I can skip Big Thunder or Rise of the Resistance this visit. I don't really care. Now, if I can, if I if I'm if I'm with people that are like doing like a once in a lifetime visit, oh yeah, I'm going to pay for Rise of the Resistance. I'll, I'll just shell up twenty bucks. Why not? You know, fuck it. But yeah, it all depends on your experience. You know, like all of us here are, are pretty like frequent visitors. So for us, it doesn't really feel worth it. But man, for that once in a lifetime, you're coming from Japan and it's your one time to go to Disneyland. Yeah, you're going to pay it. Why not? I you mean, know, I've, talk, I've talked about it before, but I mean, look, listen, you know, when you have an annual pass and you're spreading that out through a, you know, a whole year or whatever, or, you know, whatever, whatever your arrangement might be, that doesn't necessarily hit you the same way as if you're paying per, you know, per, per ticket per day or whatever. And now you're talking about, Hey, it's, you know, it's a hundred, 150 just to walk in the door. You're talking about maybe $15 per hour average just to stand in the park. So it's like, well, when you're offered, Hey, skip the line for 20 bucks. It's like, well, now I'm making money kind of thing. Right. So it's, right. It, you know, it's another. It's a different economic investment when you're looking at it from that standpoint versus annual pass holder. You know, that's for some people that makes a lot of sense. Now, there, yeah. I do know that there are certain. I don't know if they still exist today. There are certain amusement parks that require you that you have to buy individual tickets for specific attractions, or I should say, yeah, um, buy a number of tickets. No. The, and, uh, like, and if you buy just to say 20 tickets uh, and there's a specific ride that says, OK, for six tickets, you can ride this. So you give them six yeah. tickets out of the 20 or this mm -hmm. requires two tickets to ride this. So it's like, yeah, it does. It, it, like Vash is like looking at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no, I, I, They, I, they in, have existed. I don't know if they still the, exist today. Are you talking about like a state fair? <laughs> <laughs> 
we're here basically <laughs> fair. But the Adventure Dome in Vegas has that. You can just pay per ride or you can just buy an all-day wristband. But, but the caveat to that was you didn't pay for park admission. Right. You just paid yeah. for the tickets to yeah. get Adventure on Dome. the rides. Yeah, Adventure Dome, you just walk right in and you can just walk around or you pay for the thing. That but was yeah. the idea for DCA. If they if it yeah. wasn't going to get, you know, you <laughs> see, I told the story before, if they weren't able to get the, you know, funding required or get the approvals required for uh, to redo DCA, one of the other, you know, uh, other ideas was, hey, make California Adventure this kind of, you know, f free entry, so to speak. And then have everything ticketed on the back end. I mean, that was right. the idea there. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, you know, man, here's the thing. Like, I I kind of agree, like, with Universal on this. Because Universal is more expensive for that mm -hmm. lightning lane. I know they call it something else. But that same kind Express of experience. Pass, Express, Express Pass. Express Pass, yep. I, I agree with them. I think you should charge more. You make it, ex you make it super exclusive. Yeah, and then it then it really is value because yeah you're paying more, but you you're getting on these rides like in five minutes. And, but also it includes every I do how like includes everything like the shows at Waterworld, Animal Act, you just pop right in there. So right shows and oh. rides, and you just but it's like a, a super expensive price, but you get to like walk on everything, and if you get the unlimited, it was as much as you want. And so I think the standby much, much would very much uh, benefit pass. from that. So and okay. Hollywood Express is like additional usually on the busiest days. It kind of varies. On the busiest days, it's one fifty for the one for time, and then three hundred for the unlimited. And you know, people buy the unlimited because I shouldn't so, go round and so round, 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 round. So it's three hundred per person plus the ticket of like one twenty nine. So it's like really four hundred twenty nine dollars if you were to do okay. per person for the unlimited. And that's and that's just for one day. Yeah, but for the pass for five twenty nine, then your express comes with the if you have a pass holder. Cool. So. As and unattractive that, as that might seem, if Disney moved to that kind of model, standby would be, I mean, far more efficient than it is now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, now, sure. now, that would probably benefit to get an annual pass and have the Express attached to it because you're paying yeah. that one time. And right. then depending on how many times you go, you have it with you the whole entire time that you go. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think they, I think they, I think in Florida, they have a deal where if you get an annual pass, past a certain time of day, you get express pass privileges, you know? So I think it's like, like past like four o'clock or something like that. Express pass opens up to annual pass. And I was orders. tempted. I was tempted to, I did see that deal because I was tempted to get all three of us those annual passes. But then I thought, you know, depending on when the next time we'll actually go there, is it, you know, beneficial? Because I want to see how the lay of the land is, you know, before making that jump. But the, to you, put out three thousand. For it but you george you've never been to universal hollywood right no Inter interesting part it's worth a visit the, mm -hmm. the like that like is once at least go once because it, the, the the hollywood elements of it like the tram tour is freaking awesome i love the tram tour at hollywood did love you see it. that picture that went viral today with Chris Pratt and oh, stuff yeah, on the right, sides, yeah. you know, as the tram tour was, was going past? It was Chris Pratt and, and what was it? Uh, Bryce, uh, Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, they were standing on the side of the tram tour as it was going. It was crazy. It was nuts. That, Look, see, that's the fun you, stuff about Universal. I love Hollywood for that. I love that stuff. George, you know, one, t you know, I'm thinking about going to Hollywood after Nintendo World, Super Nintendo World you opens. Should. Come on down, come we go together. All right, day. sounds good to me. You know, yeah, that that that'd probably be. Yeah. The tram is having a new Wild West set opening yeah. up. It's gonna be pretty cool. Come on down, and I'll show you around. <laughs> you know, Ethan, it's funny. Like, um, I have we haven't gone to Universal yet because we, I I texted I texted you like a few yeah. months ago. Oh uh, man, I'm nervous about Forbidden Journey. I'm claustrophobic in those fucking ride vehicles. Remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my fiance's brother got COVID really bad. Man, he was Ooh, in the hospital for like like Ooh. almost a month. Ooh, he's good now he's good now but he had like huge issues you know but so we had to cancel our universal trip but like um but i really i i there's a lot of a lot of stuff at that park that i really really enjoy i love wizarding world i love the tram tour it's fun there's a lot of cool stuff i haven't been honestly since like i think it was like 2016 was the last time i went 
You're gonna be. You're gonna love Secret Life of Pets. And you yeah. Know, I want to see people. it. I want to see it. Secret Life of Pets is like whoa. But Dude, uh, Mr. Vash Sky, I will take you up on that offer when Nintendo opens, and you you go. I'll be right there with you. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, absolutely, hundred percent. Look, the the traffic to there can be really bad. <laughs> That's something you got to account for. But once you're there, you're there. Going back is no problem because end of day, whatever. But but there's there's stuff I want to see, like Secret Life of Pets and all that kind of stuff. Super Nintendo World's opening up. So yeah, you definitely got to do it. We'll make a day of it. Hey Dre, you know what? This guy yeah. right, this guy right here, Mr. Ethan Theme Park Wizard, he like his channel, he's on top of the Super Mario World. Oh my god, my Super Nintendo videos are so in fact it's hilarious. When I post anything else, I post a Toontown construction update. People comment, when's the next Nintendo thing? I'm like, well, <laughs> wait a second, I'm gonna something different. But those Nintendo things, thanks to everyone that's watching right now, the watches the Nintendos, those average like now one to two thousand views a Ah, those are fantastic, and I, they come out every Sunday and Wednesday. So, <laughs> if you're Nintendo tomorrow is going to be another <laughs> one, and I have a construction of two friends that work on Nintendo. To tell me everything that's about to pop up. Cool stuff's coming. Subscribe and watch because Nintendo is what's popping. <laughs> Every not Sunday and Wednesday. Trying, not that you were trying to plug in anything, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, so now I got I got one question for you. All right, all right, mm -hmm. one question. What do you think the chances of Hollywood getting Donkey Kong? Oh, oh okay. So, ooh, it's a, t it's a toughie. I have to see. I I feel like they're pretty decent. They're pretty decent. I can tell you that in spite of Yoshi. There's gonna be a a mini game theme to Yoshi that ha Japan does not have that we oh. will get. Or sorry, uh, yeah, theme to Yoshi. I think in the Bowser's. Or, sorry, not Bowser's. Yeah, in that area. Be, yeah, there's gonna be an exclusive mini game to Hollywood, and there's gonna be an animatronic somewhere in the land, like the Mr. Potato Head and Toy Story Mania, the interactive one. There's gonna be an interactive animatronic, a massive one that people can talk to somewhere. So that's cool. cool. It's interesting. Yeah, no, interesting. And let's go. Let's all go to the media event together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got yeah, credentials. You, let's go. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, George, you, you definitely should go at least once. It's so funny. My fiance, like, we, I took her to Universal like a few years ago, and we went on the tram tour. And then, like, every movie that we watched, she's like, oh man, they filmed that at Universal, didn't they? Oh, they filmed that at Universal, <laughs> didn't they? Because, like, it's so funny how much they film at this at this studio. Yep. You, you don't even realize it. Like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, all filmed at Universal, right? Yeah. Like Adventure there's stories of film there in the Metro sets, right? Everything is filmed at Universal. Everything is filmed at Universal. It, it Disney, Universal, Warner Brothers it doesn't even matter. They're all filmed over there. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy. And once you've seen it, once you've seen the backlot and everything, and especially the Metro sets in particular, you go. Oh, like this looks like a bunch of stuff. And when you see that stuff, it's like, wait a minute, that was a universal. You know, it's kind of <laughs> one of those things that you have going forward. By the way, has the tram gone through the metro sets uh, in, in a while? Uh, it hasn't. There's been a lot of filming over there for something. Oh. Um, but it started to go through little Europe more, or little Italy, whatever that's called. I really mm. haven't been there until this year when it starts to go. And those electric ones are very smooth and very calm. I like these yeah. electric ones. Very quiet yes. from, from what I've seen. Very, very quiet. Very quiet helps with the filming, helps with the, you can hear the, the uh, narrators, you don't hear the, the whole right, time. Right, yeah. And it's pretty nice. They're pretty nice. The Good. electric trams. And with supercharged, biting the dust with the drifting coaster, it's going to be even better. What, where Where is that drifting coaster going to go, Ethan? Oh, there are two spots. It's either going to okay. take out special effects and animal actors with a little kind of swoop over the escalators, so giving you a nice little view, or somewhere on the lower lot. But the thinking now is those two stages, because special effects is removed from the website. And I think they said Born is coming to the lower lot, I think. Oh, what? Born. It's going to get Born? Yeah. And then Interesting. they're going to swoop over the now, I, I have Born. seen I have seen segments of Born over on our side and i actually can't wait to see that because some of the effects of the the show is 
quite impressive of what I've seen just on yeah, the please video. let us know. Let us know. Yeah. No, it. hey, Ethan, Ethan is a universal guy. He knows a lot of like, stuff about you. Wow. Thank goodness it's so convenient. It's only 20 minutes from my house, so convenience wins. Wow. You know, so oh, okay. cool. Okay. So, okay. You okay. gotta well, come visit. You gotta come. <laughs> then we gotta go with Ethan, but I suppose. You gotta come. You gotta come in the summertime so you can see the dark art show on with the big drones. Oh, super cool. Now, I did I did tell people, I said, look, if I'm gonna go there, it's gotta be when the dark art show is going, because that thing looks ridiculous. It's humongous. Like you can see it. Orange Grove, you probably can see it from your house if you look. It's tall. It's, it's, it's tall. You can easily see it from the 101 and 134. I bet you you can see a little twinkling light from if you stepped out on your balcony and I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> yep. Hey, hey guys, real quick, I, I wanna I wanna I wanna show you guys something really really cool, real quick. Sure. The patron saint of Daddy Josh is mm -hmm. right behind me. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Boy, man. Oh, boy. Look at that. That's <laughs> the patron saint. And Grogu, I see you over there, Grogu, with the, looking all cool with your backwards hat. Oh, little guy. I oh, yeah, right. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> How they haven't capitalized on Grogu have, in the parks. Well, we got, well they got now Grogu Crazy. merch. They got Grogu merch added, but it's like, okay, we got enough merch. It's like, I want to see Grogu. Like, I want to see him. Yes. There he is. There he is. There's the man. Battle of the Grogu. <laughs> oh, how great. Now I want to take a picture with him in Galaxy's Edge, but I can't, so that sucks. <laughs> I see. Oh. That's what we're talking about. Oh, Why I'm can't lying. you do this? <laughs> Very bad. Very bad. Maybe soon. they're talking about capitalizing on money. I'm for sure people would pay big time money for a lightning lane to get a picture with it with him. I'll even Could give you him an NFT. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? <laughs> the NFT. The NFT <laughs> <laughs> no, I the the fact that they haven't you set up a Mandalorian meet and greet or a Grogu meet and greet or any of these new characters coming out that people actually want to see in these parks. Snooping. <laughs> <laughs> but I, hey, it will never make hey, sense. But hey, we, we we still got Ray and Kylo Ren, you know. Yeah. Uh, barely, I didn't even see them when I went. I don't know where they were. <laughs> they're taking they're taking a break. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even see the stormtroopers walking around. I, I guess they were too busy on riding. Uh, there like, was there was I forget where I see, saw it on. It it kind of went. It didn't go super viral yet. I don't even know where. I'm trying to remember. There's this video, and there's this young kid had to be six seven that approached ray and i don't know if it was bef like now recently or if it was before the pnd or what have you mm -hmm. and the the boy approached her he was about to go up to her and he stopped and backed up and he said you're not daisy ridley <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Mark kid Wait, anyway, that, that's how I feel about the, the about the Wandavision. Um, I mean the want the one the one yeah, the yeah. Man, I'm sorry. Hey, no no disrespect to the <laughs> cast member that's playing her in Avengers. Like, like you're not Elizabeth Olsen. Nope, <laughs> not, <laughs> not even close. Like not even close. Uh, no, see, if it was Elizabeth mm -hmm. Olsen, if they want money for a lightning lane, they could just oh, take I'll my whole master card. <laughs> I'll give them 10 NFTs for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, you bring up an interesting point, guys. Have you seen some of these meet and greets? Uh, look, listen, have I know there are labor Anna issues. And Elsa? <laughs> right? Have you seen Anna and Elsa that when they did the reopening at Walt Disney World? Oh, Ooh. my God. Nothing against these women, please. Nothing against them. No, but, no, no but nothing they, against anybody. They, would, they do not fit... <laughs> The characters. I'm sorry. It looks like Anna and Elsa aged like 25 years. It's like can't cancel George. Cancel George. <laughs> cancel George. <laughs> no, look, listen. Disney Trail. Well, no, no, no. To, to George's credit, right? Look, 
<laughs> usually the 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 requirements for some of these roles are so strict they are so strict in terms of of who they uh previously hired and who could actually play these roles but but look now in the age of labor shortages and hey we, we need people to fill a role it, 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 it looks like they're doing just that uh, just saying just saying yes oh man oh, and uh yeah that's why more i don't know does Disney have? I guess they do. Well, what because I, cause, yeah, because I heard to be a costume performer, I mean, they say it. I mean, I don't know how the process is now, but I mean, they said it's harder th to do that than to get into Harvard. Like, I mean, like it's like a process. Yeah, but yes, you do things like I don't know more of them. Like you know, Universal is like Megatron and and. The, the raptors, you know, those can't age. So if uh, Disney has like some non face characters, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get a bunch yeah. of Tokyo, age, yeah, we're gonna get a bunch of Tokyo type characters. Where it's like, <laughs> wait the, a the, minute, the, the that was a, fairy god, was a face fairy character godmother. before, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the fairy godmother or uh, Jessica Rabbit, oh, <laughs> fairy godmother. I'm, That's I'm gonna go with Jessica about. Rabbit. Yeah. yeah, I'll go with Jessica Rabbit and and yes, Roger Rabbit is coming back. I'm ninety nine percent sure. So it absolutely people, is. The people that uh, see the carts, they're just you know. Well, you and especially they there. just updated the ride. They're not going to yeah. update it to just to shut it down. Yeah, exactly. but just because there's some cars on the back of a truck, they're not going to sit there getting dusty. They're cutting the whole thing. They're nah. getting nice little refurb people. Crazy. Yeah, Disney went through this whole thing to sort of pat themselves on the back. Look how look how progressive we are. We're putting a <laughs> coat on Jessica Rabbit to cover her up. Hey, they yeah, wouldn't it, do that. <laughs> it took that hey, it only took an extra ride. twenty-five. It only took an extra twenty-five dollars just to add a trench coat and a hat on her. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, my goodness. Thank you so much for coming on. I could talk to you for hours. Now I'm gonna have to come back on because I feel like there's a lot of stuff we didn't talk about. You got to come back on. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Where can we find you, Orange Grove? You can find me on YouTube with these crazy kids down below, Mr. <laughs> uh, Citrus Corner and Mr. Freshly Squeezed at Orange Grove 55 on YouTube. Check us out. We do a lot of the same kind of content that Mr. Ethan, uh, Mr. Wizard does here. Um, we just kind of talk. Well, we focus mostly on Disney, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. We talk about, about Disney parks. We, we focus a lot on Disneyland Resort, Walt Disney World. We also dive into like Hollywood. Um, we, we do like an orange nerd show or we do like a lot of streaming and film stuff. So, but yeah, it's it's all kind of Disney related, you know, sort of stuff. But uh, check us out. When you, when you get a chance, check us out. Um, you know, YouTube, Orange Grove 55. Disney family man, where can we find you? Absolutely. Well, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Disney Family Man Twenty Three. Uh, you can you can you can also interact with me on Twitter. And please, uh, Lord knows how many uh, things I'm going to get after this video. <laughs> at Disney Cancel World. George. Yes, <laughs> but you can find me on Twitter at Disney George. And of course, as Mr. OG had mentioned, you can find me on his channel, Orange Grove Fifty Five, with Citrus Corner, aka the Florida Corner, and then yes. Bash go! <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh, I do appreciate it. Uh, look, listen. If you want to follow me, uh, you can you can do so at Bash Sky right down there for the very robust discussion. Lots of discussion on there for sure. And if you want to see me, well, it's on the it's on Orange Grove Fifty Five at Freshly Squeeze, your source for juicy news and info. Squeeze fresh right from the Grove. Um, this drop by. Yeah, I'll play it. I'll play it. But really, nothing compares with a freshly squeezed. And that is out of the woo. Uh, you know, given the phrase, the freshly squeezed right there, uh, presumably. <laughs> about. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more theme park updates and have a fantastic day.